Dome, I'd like to ask you another question that uh, we discussed earlier. Uh, recently, you, you said on Democracy Now! that Israeli intervention in U.S. elections vastly overwhelms anything the Russians may have done. Can you ex elaborate on that? How is it that both Israelis themselves and the Israeli lobby in the U.S. functions? Well, sometimes it is so blatant that uh, it's kind of mind-boggling. So you may recall that uh, the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, showed up uh, at the invitation of some right-wing members of Congress uh, to, li to deliver an address uh, to the joint session of Congress uh, without notifying the White House even, in which he uh, condemned, he used his address to condemn uh, Obama's uh, policies, uh, mainly with regard to Iran. Uh, Obama had been, had uh, helped initiated the negotiations that led to the, uh, uh, the joint program, the Iran nuclear deal, and the, this is anathema to Netanyahu who wants the U.S. to support an attack on Iran. So here's a prime minister of another country showing up in Congress ignoring, completely ignoring the state executive of the White House and telling them uh, we've got to, you, you guys have got to completely reverse these policies. It's, it's almost impossible to think of a, uh, a form of intervention in the legislative process that exceeds this. And this is only a very small part of it. You just take a look at the main funders of uh, both the Republican and the Democratic Party. In the Republican Party, it's uh, people like Sheldon Adelson, uh, tens of millions of dollars, uh, ultra-right, uh, a supporter of the ultra-right Israeli uh, nationalism settlement programs. Uh, on, on the Democratic side, Chaim Saban is a huge, a billion, another billionaire, a huge supporter. Uh, you look through the rest of the donors, it's the same. There are lobbying groups, open lobbying groups like APAC, which uh, basically agencies of the Israeli government, which are constantly uh, uh, twisting the arms of people in Congress. Uh, I mean, if the, it is so far beyond anything that is attributed to the Russians that you just you can't even compare it. I mean, and I should say that, uh, side comment, uh, when we're considering the intervention in our pristine democratic process, it's worth bearing in mind that even the Israeli intervention, which is far beyond any other country, is minuscule as compared with the corruption of the political process by simply funding of candidates. Now, this is not just since Citizens United that opened the faucet a little wider, but it goes back over a century. You go back to 1895, uh, there was a great famous campaign manager, Mark Hanna, uh, was asked once, uh, what are the important things to, that you need for a political campaign? And he said, uh, the first thing is money, and the second thing is money. And I've forgotten what the third is. <laughs> that was the 1890s. Uh, and in fact, there's extensive important work in academic social science, uh, political science, which shows that you can literally predict the outcome of an election with remarkable precision uh, simply by looking at the one variable of campaign funding. That's both for president and for Congress, and it runs through the 2016 campaign, incidentally. And that's just a small part of it, since electability depends on campaign funding. That means uh, your congressional representative, once he or she is elected, their first task is to get funding for the next election. Uh, meanwhile, what happens to the legislative process? Well, corporate lobbies 
are invited to talk to the staff, the congressional staff, and instruct them about what the legislation ought to be. And this reaches the point where they actually write the legislation. They're written by corporate lobbyists, uh, signed by the congressional representative. Uh, this is one reason why uh, other work demonstrates that about 70% about of the voting population, the lower 70% on the income scale, are completely disenfranchised, literally, in the sense that their own representatives pay absolutely no attention to their opinions. They're listening to the donor class. Uh, you know, talking about interference in the elections in a system like this is kind of uh, ludicrous in the first place. But if we want to talk about foreign interference, there's nothing remotely to compare with the Israeli interference. It's perfectly open and blatant. They don't even try to conceal it. Thank you. Dr. Abu Fadl, I'd like you to speak about the, we hear a lot less about